Assalamu alaikum everyone. I am Mohammad Mahid Mubarak and going to present my MEC thesis work under the supervision of Dr. Mohammad Mustafa Ali sir. So this is the title of my thesis which is Accessing Future Stream Flow of Brahmaputra River Basin under Selected Climate Change Scenarios Using Deep Learning Models. In today's presentation, I will walk through the background of the study, the study area, the literature review, and the gaps I have found in the literature are addressed in my objective, then methodology and result, and the key findings, which is actually the conclusion part, and then recommendations for future work, and finally, the references. So starting with the background of the study. So first question may come by focusing on the stream flow prediction. Well, stream flow is the vital for water management, agriculture, flood control, irrigation, and hydropower generation. And the second question may come, why I choose Brombutra River Basin as my study area? Because Brombutra is the fourth largest river based on the discharge and highly climate sensitive river basin. Due to monsoon flooding and Himalayan snow melt is likely to occur major flooding. And finally, why I used, deep, uh, I used deep learning model for this task? Well, hydrological models like HHMS or SOART require heavy calibration and struggle under the nonlinear climate data. And often their performance drop due to climate change. On the other hand, deep learning can learn nonlinear relation with fewer parameters. That's why I choose deep learning for this task. So this is the map of study area, which is Brahmaputra River Basin. And the origin of the Brahmaputra River is China and enters into the Bangladesh as Transboundary River through the district Kodigram. This basin has the largest share with China, which is almost 50%, and then India, which is almost 34%, and 8% share with Bangladesh and 8% with Bhutan. So this is the part of literature review, Hawk et al developed HHMS model for Brahmaputra River Basin and projected 61% increase in mean annual flow by 28 this period. While Alum et al. developed SWOT model for this basin and found similar increase in discharge by the year 2100. On, <clears throat> uh, on the other hand, the deep learning site Pulse et al. developed LSTM transformer model for steam flow forecasting and found that transformer model is better performer than uh, the LSTM model for its longer memory system. Again, Shahriar developed three deep learning models for steam flow prediction, which are CNN, LSTM, and CNN LSTM, and found CNN LSTM performs best. So the gaps I have found in the literature which are machine learning is underused in this basin and the few machine learning models are deployed for only short term prediction like one day to one month or maximum for one year. Again, most of those machine learning models do not incorporate the climate change due to the short term prediction. And often their inputs are mainly discharge only. And again, there is no study where machine learning results are compared with hydrological model result. So the gaps are addressed in my objective and these are below. So my first objective is to develop and compare three deep learning models, which are LSTM, BioLSTM and transformer model. And the second one is to predict the future stream flow at Bahadurabad station of Brahmaputra River under selected climate change scenario. And finally, to conduct a comparative analysis of deep learning model and HHMS model result under identical scenarios and time frame. Here, the process showing how I have selected the input parameters. Uh, so initially, the six input parameters are chosen from the literature, which are rainfall, maximum temperature, minimum temperature, evaporation, snow, and the soil moisture. And I go through a process which is called principal component analysis and cross validated R square value. And I found three is the optimum number for taking as input parameter. The highest mean value of cross validated R square gives the group having the three 
predictors which are rainfall, maximum temperature, and the minimum temperature. That's why I choose these three predictors for my model input. And the last graph showing the variable relevance matrix, which is actually correlation value matrix, showing rainfall is 85% correlated with soil moisture, and maximum temperature is 85% correlated with evaporation, and minimum temperature has 90% correlation with snow. So from the analysis, it can be said that rainfall is representative of soil moisture, maximum temperature is the representative of evaporation, and the minimum temperature is the representative of snow. Here, presenting the result of our feature ablation study. As we can see, the model was trained and tested using different combination of predictors, like rainfall alone, or temperature only and various joint combinations such as rainfall with maximum temperature or rainfall with minimum temperature and the full set of rainfall maximum temperature and the minimum temperature and <clears throat> we can see that the closest agreement between observed and predicted discharge is showing using full set of predictors and this is the part of climate data collection and collecting precipitation and temperature data from 13 GCM under four SSP scenarios from Mishra provided data set. And the advantages of Mishra data is bias corrected and downscale to 0.25 degree spatial resolution. So previously I mentioned the data collection is from 13 GCM and four SSP scenarios. So 13 times four is 52 scenarios. So out of 52 scenarios, six extreme climate conditions are selected based on the precipitation and the temperature value. And the summary is representative, represented as the table here showing six climate scenarios and one multimodal ensemble scenario. For the combination of GCM with SSP, where there is maximum increase in precipitation at 2080s period is denoted as wettest scenario and the decrease in precipitation is denoted as driest and the medium increase in denoted is moderate wet. And similar goals for the temperature based scenario which are classified into warmest, coolest and moderately warm. And this is the summary of data collection. Historical precipitation data is collected from Aphrodite website. Historical temperature data is collected from ERA5 reanalysis data. And future precipitation and temperature are collected from SIMIPSIC. Also, the discharge data collected from BWDB rating curve. Here, showing the spatial resolution of collected both historical and the future data, which are actually 0.25 degree spatial resolution. This is the model architecture of LSTM and the BioLSTM. The LSTM has actually four components, input gate, forget gate, memory cell, and output gate. Again, BioLSTM architecture is nothing but a two LSTM layer, one from forward direction and another from backward direction. And this is the transformer model architecture, which is completely different from LSTM or the BioLSTM by its self attention mechanism which is absent in LSTM and by LSTM. So this is the overall methodology showing in the diagram. Initially, historical precipitation temperature and discharge data are collected and used for development of LSTM, by LSTM and transformer model using 80% data for training and the remaining 20% data for testing. Performance of the three deep learning models are determined through R square, R star, RMAC and the PWAS value. And from the analysis, transformer is selected as the best performer. So the future stream flow is predicted using the transformer model, using the CMF6 future data of precipitation, maximum temperature, and minimum temperature. And finally, the future stream flow is determined under six climate scenarios, which I have mentioned earlier. And also for multi-model ensemble scenario, for the time periods of 2030s, 2050s, and 2080s. And finally, these results are compared with the Hake HMS model, which is already exist. Here showing the multiple lag length are tested and found 14 days, here's a good balance. With lower P bias and RMC value, and also NEC value is 0.942, which is very close to one. 
training and testing of three deep learning models are showing and their performance metrics are showing in the below table. And from the graph in the table, it can be said that best performer model is transformer and by LSTM is competitive. And then LSTM is the least competitive or the least performer. Monthly here showing the result part and monthly mean discharge hydrographs are showing for three climate scenarios and also for multi-model ensemble. The peak discharge is noticed under the wettest and the warmest scenario for 2080s period. Here showing the seasonal mean stream flow, uh, which are uh, pre-monsoon, monsoon, post-monsoon post and dry, all actually intensify by 2080s period and the median's race and the whisker widen, especially in the monsoon. Annual mean trend upward in all scenarios with wettest and the warmest in leading position. And the right side of the plot is Taylor diagram showing the percentage increase in future discharge for all scenarios. Here showing the box plot of monthly maxima increases across the scenarios, especially in the wettest and warmest by 2080s period. Here also showing the percentage increase of monthly maxima and the strongest jump is noticed under the warmest climate condition, which is almost 250%. And here showing the return period flows raise in every scenario and especially by the late century and the curve shaped upwards, that is actually the signature of hydrologic intensification. And here showing the flood frequency analysis under multi-model ensemble scenario. And we can see in the table that 100 year floods is expected to raise by more than 30% at the end of the century. So I previously said or mentioned a HKMS model was developed for the same time frame and the scenarios and for basin. And now a comparison is conducted between two results from deep learning and HKMS. Here showing the two tables showing, uh, showing for uh, their performance metrics of deep learning and HKMS. And here transformer model shows much stronger performance with R square P bias and RSR value than HKMS model. And these are the monthly mean discharge comparison from transformer and HKMS model. And the hydrograph shape and the flow magnitude are also very similar from the two results. In all the scenarios, hydrological model little bit under predicts the discharge. And the same hydrograph under the multimodal ensemble scenario showing almost the similar trend. And here showing the seasonal mean discharge comparison for both results agree on the almost same discharge magnitude. And similar plot for multimodal ensemble scenario showing the similar trend. And for annual mean discharge comparison by 2080s, the deep learning yields 27 to 30,000 cubic meter per second, while the HMS yield 24 to 26,000 cubic meter per second and the central message is almost consistent. And these are the key findings or the conclusion part from my study. For the stream flow prediction, transformer model performs the best and giving us a reliable driver for the future prediction. For monthly mean discharge hydrograph, both flow magnitude and the duration are intensifying with the time. And comparing with the base flow, the seasonal peak discharge have shifted from July to August. And here we can see that the July medians are projected to raise from 60 to 70,000 in 2030s to 90 to 100,000 in 2080s. And for multimodal ensemble also projected to increase in for far future discharge. And also we noticed about the seasonal change for the pre-monsoon, the seasonal mean discharge has increased from 12,000 to 18,000 cubic meter per second. And for monsoon, it has increased the greatest uh, from 45,000 to 53,000 cubic meter per second. And also for post-monsoon, it has increased from 18,000 to 24,000 cubic meter per second. 
and also in the dry season, this seasonal mean discharge has also raised. Again, annual mean stream flow raised mostly for wettest, which is almost 95%, and the warmest for 90%. And monthly maxima increases with the time. As a result, it actually increases the flooding probability. And by 2080s, 83% flooding will be increased. Here, showing the flood frequency analysis, uh, actually, all three distribution we have used, namely Campbell distribution, log normal distribution, and log Pearson type 3 passes. But log Pearson type 3 fits good and showing the strong late century amplification. And the right side table showing the discharge increases are more pronounced under the wettest and warmest scenario. From the analysis, it can be said the deep learning model and HMS model agree on the same direction, more water, higher peak, and longer high flow station. But deep learning is more sensitive to climate change. So it can be said the deep learning is not just an extra tool, but a better option for future prediction under changing climate. And some recommendations for future study to incorporate the land use and land cover changes, such as uh, urbanization, deforestation in deep learning model architecture. And the second one, to improve, incorporate the mo uh, more input parameters to develop the model performance. And finally, deep learning model will be more robust if human intervention can be properly addressed in the model. And here are the references. And thank you, everyone.